एंड एच पी एल सी इज वाइडली यूज फॉर क्वान्टिफिकेशन ऑफ द इम्प्योरिटीज और रिलेटेड सब्सटेंसेज प्रेजेंट इन टू एन एनालिटिकल सैम्पल सो द ऑबियस क्वेश्चन विल कम वेन वी टॉक अबाउट क्वान्टिफिकेशन इज वेदर डू वी नीड टू प्रिपेयर ए स्टैंडर्ड और वी नो नीड टू प्रिपेयर द स्टैंडर्ड and when you say that okay we no need to prepare the standard then in that case you are actually going to quantify impurities based on to the only areas or the response of the impurities and the principal compound this technique is called as the percent area normalization in this technique you assume that the entire area from impurities plus your drug substance or api is equal to 100% so what are the important fact you must know when you are thinking to use the percent area normalization method for the impurity quantification this is the topic of today's discussion hello and welcome this is bhaskar napte from pharma growth hub I am on the mission to help pharma professionals to get absolute clarity on various technical aspects with the help of a proven system. So if you are struggling with technical aspect or your career growth and would like to unleash your true potential join the pharma growth hub today. To know more about the services of the pharma growth hub join the WhatsApp group of the pharma growth hub by using the link given in the description. So let us begin the talk now. and first we will try to understand what is the percent area normalization method for related substances by an hplc ra stands for the related substances and it also can be used for the gas chromatography also or for any kind of chromatography technique so when you talk about the percent area normalization you need to calculate the individual peak area for the related substances as well as for your drug substance or the principal compound so when you have the peak areas for the individual compounds what you are assuming now the sum of all peak area is equal to 100% for example you have three impurities in your chromatograph with peak areas of a compound a has 5000 compound b has 25000 peak area and the compound c has 20000 peak area now these are the three impurities present into your sample let us assume that the peak area for principal compound or your api or drug substance is 450000 i am just assuming the figure to explain you with the help of simple calculation now what is the total area of the uh, the peak that you are seeing in the chromatogram three three peaks from the impurities impurity a b c and the fourth peak is from the principal compound itself so all together this four peaks is having the 5 lakhs total area so now we got the individual peak areas we also got the total peak area hence the content of compound a will be 5000 divided by 5 lakh so 5000 is the response for the compound a the peak area for the compound a divided by 5 lakhs the 5 lakhs is coming from where the sum of the total area into 100 gives the percentage of the compound a out of this all out of this total response and you will find that it is 1% similarly you will be able to calculate the the content of compound b as 5% compound the the content of compound c as 4% now in this case uh, in case if the response for the impurities are not similar in case if you know the relative uh, response factor you also can use the relative response factor while using percent area normalization method too so just apply the percent uh, sorry just apply the rrf and here is the example so in case if the rrf for impurity a is 1.2 so the content of compound a will be now the same calculation or share but also you need to divide this 
whatever figure you will get by its RRF and here the RRF is 1.2 so you will get 0.83% as the content for compound A. I hope you understand the percent area normalization calculation part. Now the next important point is when the percent area normalization for related substances by an HPLC can be used in case if the principal compound has an acceptable linear response throughout the entire range from its LOQ to 150% of the sample concentration. Now share the, the word 150% of the sample concentration is very important. Let us say your LOQ of analytical method is uh, 4 ppm, right? The 4 ppm. And in case if the concentration of sample is uh, 400 ppm, most of the times what we do, we conduct the linearity against the specification of respective impurities. Let us say you have a limit for impurity as 1 ppm. Now what is the concentration of sample? As I said, it is 400 ppm. So what is the one percentage of 400 ppm? Now that becomes 4 ppm. And according to the ICH or your in-house SOP, if you have a requirement that the linearity has to be drawn from LOQ to 150%, then you will consider 150% of the 1% impurity that becomes 150 into 4 ppm, that becomes 6 ppm. So most of the times, we end up performing the linearity from LOQ to 6 ppm. That is what the linearity is called. But in case of, uh, if you want to use the percent area normalization, you should not consider the linearity response for the impurity concentration as the way I said 6 ppm in the last example. But you must consider the concentration of the sample so if the sample concentration is 400 ppm now what is the 150 percent of 400 ppm it becomes 600 ppm so you need to prove the linearity from LOQ of your analytical test procedure to the 600 ppm of the analyte concentration i'm talking about the drug substance or the api Unless and until you have this linear response for the drug substance from its LOQ to 150% of the actual test concentration, you will not be able to use the percent area normalization. And that's the reason it can be only used if you meet this very important condition. Now let us say you got the response which is linear until 600 ppm as given in this example. But we also know that at the higher concentration the peak shape tend to get distorted. Sometimes it get plateaued up, it get flattened at the apex and you may end up getting the M shape peak shape sometimes. So it is very important to understand that you know. You may be getting the very nice peak shape, very Gaussian, symmetric at the low concentration, at your impurity level. But what is the situation of the peak shape at the higher concentration? Let us say exactly at 100 percentage of the sample, which is 400 ppm in this example. That is okay, fantastic. What is the peak shape at 150 percentage of the sample concentration? That is at 600 ppm. If it is also great acceptable there could be some tailing happening but if it is less than your system suitability criteria then you are allowed to use the percent area normalization now what are the advantages of percent area normalization so why one can think of using the percent area normalization as a technique for impurity quantification and the first one is here so in case if there is an interference coming out of your diluent or coming out of your placebo solution in case of drug product which is not above LOQ 
but below yellow cube. Isn't it? There is an interference coming from the blank, diluent or placebo, not above yellow cube, but below yellow cube. But there is some response coming out of the sample matrix and the diluent. So don't you think that this lower response can also contribute to the increase or variation in the diluted standard response? Now sure, the placebo response may not be that important. But when it comes to the response coming out of the diluent, that can certainly impact onto your diluted standard response. In case if you are using a diluted standard and if the response from the diluent is just below LOQ which is quite acceptable in your case but will not that impact onto the response of diluted standard? Certainly yes. And in that case, if you use the diluted standard as your quantification technique, you will have errors in the quantification. But this error will certainly get minimized or certainly get nullified in case if you are using the percent area normalization. The second important point is, now what is the advantage of the percent area normalization? The system suitability, for example, sorry, the system variability, uh, which is coming, for example, from the injection to injection variation, will not impact the end result. Because in case if you have the variation from one injection to another injection, let us assume that in one injection, you get a peak area for your principal compound equal to 100. I am giving a very simple example. The peak area is the 100. And according to that, the peak area for your impurity is 10. When the peak area for your drug substance, your principal compound is 100, you observe that the impurity has a response, the peak area of 10. Remember these two few important figures. Now the moment because of the injection to injection variation, if your peak area for principal compound drug substance or API becomes 90, what do you expect the peak response for the impurities in the exhaust in this injection now? It was earlier 10 when the principal peak response was 100. But as the principal peak response has reduced to 90, by 10%, don't you also think that the response of the impurity is also going to get reduced by 10% now? And it will become 9 now. So similarly, if you calculate the, the percent area response, will it change because of the change in the response now? It will not change. And that is the biggest advantage of the percent area normalization. So you need not to worry about the injection to injection variation. The absolute areas will change 100 in the first injection, 90 in the second injection. But when you calculate the percent response for the impurity, relatively will it change? It will not. And hence the percent area normalization has the biggest plus on to the system variability. So as I said that the system variability system variability doesn't really matter much when it comes to percent area normalization. What do you think in case if the system suitability has to be established? Most of the times in case of diluted standard, people consider percent RSD as a suitable checkpoints to confirm whether the system is really suitable or not. But when you talk about the percent area normalization, the system variability itself is not a big deal. So in case if there is a need to evaluate resolution, plate counts or tailing, that has to be considered. But the reproducibility or the repeatability of uh, response from one injection to another injection is not a critical when it comes to percent area normalization. When I said that the injection to injection variability is not really a necessary, a critical point, 
that means the percent RSD for replicate injection is not a real necessity and hence if you want to save a lot of time okay because you need to invest at least for six number of injections to evaluate percent RSD and assume that if your run time is just 60 minutes you need six hours just to prove that the system is suitable or not now the six hours can be saved off in case if you are using percent area normalization but include the resolution between the critical band pairs includes the tailing factor uh, for the uh, standard solution which is again equal to your test concentration as you, please understand that in case if you are using the percent area normalization your standard if you are injecting must be at the same concentration to that of sample concentration and then you can certainly move ahead now what are the limitations of the percent area normalization you talked about the advantages let us now also understand what are the limitations and the first will be this one the percent area normalization method can't be used if the principal compound has a non-linear response through the range LOQ to 150% of the sample concentration. It's very simple, right? If you're not getting proportionate increment for the sample, which is at a very high concentration, as I said, 400 ppm, but the impurities are not at that high level, right? They are at very 1 ppm, 2 ppm, 4, 10 ppm levels. So their response may not get compromised because of the Beers Lambert's law failure. They are at very low concentration. But what about the sample concentration? It is already at very high level. And you are assuming that the response must be linear, linear for the impurities and the sample concentration. So if there is no proportionate increase in the response is found for the sample at its concentration of the test, then probably you cannot use the percent area normalization. The percent area normalization method can't be used if the principal compound has unacceptable recovery through the range, especially at higher concentration. Now understand the point number two, in most of the times in related substances, we only consider the recovery for the impurities, isn't it? And the impurity may get recovered because of their low concentration. But in case if you now want to use the percent area normalization, you have to also consider the percent recovery of the analyte, your API, at its test concentration, which is 400 ppm now. Or if you are considering the accuracy at the highest level until 150%, then it can become 600 ppm. So understand, you know, you also need to confirm the percent recovery at 600 ppm for the API, your principal compound or the drug substance. Are you able to get the recoveries at that level? If not, then certainly you cannot use the percent area normalization for the quantification of impurities. And the third one is the percent area normalization method can't be used if the peak shape of the principal compound gets distorted through the range, especially at the higher concentration. Isn't it? It is not the good sign to indicate the percent area normalization can be used. So you should have the symmetric peak. If not symmetric, at least with the acceptable amount of tailing. And again, consider add the concentration of the taste it's very important thank you so much i hope you must have now got an idea what are the factors you know the fact you must consider for the application of percent area normalization for quantification of related substances by using an hplc system thank you